Today we're looking at a mini PC from B-Link. This is the SER8, powered by an 8000 series Ryzen 7 processor. Okay, on the desk is the B-Link SER8 mini PC. This is in the frost silver finish. This is powered by an AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS processor. This has 32 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte of storage as configured, but both of those are user upgradable. Wi-Fi 6 and 2.5 gigabit ethernet. So a very capable mini PC as far as connectivity is concerned. Here it is on the B-Link website, this SER8 Ryzen 7 8845HS, eight cores, 16 threads up to 5.1 gigahertz. And as configured, this is the 32 gigabyte plus one terabyte model in Frost Silver, 649 US dollars. And here they're pointing out that the RAM and storage are both user upgradable. It's using DDR5 5600, up to 256 gigabytes as supported. There are dual M.2 PCIe Gen 4 slots. And it claims 32 decibel near silent operation. Air intake from the bottom is so efficient at dissipating the heat that SCR8 needs very low fan speed. Does that say very low fan speed to stay cool and stable at a 65 watt TDP? So this really sounds like the perfect mini PC because you've got more than enough power from a Ryzen 7 8845HS. Let's open this up and take our first look at the SER8. I love this. There's uh, instructions about setting up a personal account. So I'm guessing this does have Windows on it. If you cannot log into your personal account, please turn off Wi-Fi and LAN select the skip option and then log into your personal account in the system. And that really does uh, add to the user experience with this mini PC, of course. So I should probably take the uh, plastic off. Here's that ventilated bottom panel, which I thought was metal. I guess it's metal mesh inside, if you can see that. Pretty shiny aluminum here. Got your power button, 3.5 millimeter jack, USB-C, USB type A, nothing on either side. And on the back, you have two more type A's, the 2.5 gigabit LAN, display port, HDMI, another USB type A, headset, another USB-C, and then the DC in, 19 volts, 5.26 amps. Large vent along the top here, and you can see the the heat sink fins. Talked about ease of upgrading, but we're gonna have to get past these little screw covers on each corner. In the box, we have a piece of foam and cardstock, some paperwork and adapter. This one has that barrel connector on it. The adapter puts out 19 volts and 5.26 amps. Hey, it actually comes with an HDMI cable. And that's it for the packaging. Taking a closer look at the mini PC, I'll grab a handy ruler and verify that it is indeed just about exactly 135 millimeters square. It is just about exactly 50 millimeters tall, including the rubber feet. Now in inches, that is a little under two inches tall and a little over five and a quarter inches wide. Before we can take the bottom off and look inside, uh, we have to remove some rubber covers that are hiding the screws. I thought this would be very easy, maybe not. Simple Phillips screw underneath. So once you get these, I'm just using a spudger stick here. Once you get these removed, it should be fairly easy to get this panel off. And actually I noticed that this piece right here apparently is a tab to help you pull this off. Even with the cover removed, we're not quite into the system yet because there is a metal mesh panel here. 
it says, please dust regularly. So this is your intake screen filter. And that's also held in by Phillips screws. So there's the screen filter. It's pretty fine mesh. It'll keep larger dust bunnies out of the system. With the screen filter removed, we have our first look at some system components. And look at this, crucial branded memory pre-installed. That's nice. Unlike a recent mini PC I looked at that had brands I'd never heard of before, we have a nice aluminum heat sink for your M.2 slots, one of which, of course, should be populated. Another couple of screws to get this off. This SSD has a Fizon controller. This SSD is also from Crucial. This is the P3 Plus, one terabyte. It says 1,000 gigabytes, but it's nice to see actual, you know, branded memory and storage here from a brand you can trust. So far, the little rubber feet hiding the screws are the only thing I didn't like about this process, but getting into this case has been very straightforward. I'm not going to disassemble this any further, at least not until I complete thermal testing on it, but you can at least see what kind of Wi-Fi card this is. Indeed, it is an Intel. This is model AX200NGW. There's your Wi-Fi 6. Getting kind of Mac Mini vibes off of this if you've worked on a Intel Mac Mini from back in the day. Nothing about Apple. This is about x86 computing with an AMD processor and Radeon graphics. It's actually pretty involved to take this thing apart completely and get a look at that cooler, so I'm not going to do that. Let's put the storage back in and close this thing up and do some quick testing. The system is up and running, and you can see this is Windows 11. Windows 11 Pro 23H2 was pre-installed. actually says it was installed on 5-30-2024, which is tomorrow as I record this, so I'm not sure how that's possible. There is... Or maybe you can hear it. There's some audible fan noise coming from this mini PC. I'll bring the lapel mic closer. Just ignore the cars driving by. It's not bad, but it's a noticeable white noise. Thankfully, I have a sound pressure meter handy. So I'll stop talking and we'll just see what it says. So around 33, it depends on how close we are to the system. This is about where my head would be if I was sitting at the desk. So we're hitting the limits of that meter. And actually, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the fan just... The fan just ramped down a little bit, so we'll check the BIOS, see what kind of fan settings we have. Maybe the download was done, actually. Let's see. Yeah, the download is complete. We're also going to get hardware info so we can monitor those uh, fan speeds and things like that. Looking at the system summary here, we have that Ryzen 7 8845HS processor on a 4 nanometer process node, 45 watt TDP, Radeon 780 graphics, the crucial memory and SSD, Windows 11 Pro 23H2. Very capable looking system. Let's look at some sensor data. The room is about 21C, I don't know if you can read that or not, it's 20.9 in here, and the CPU is right around 28 Celsius. Shows a high of 49.1, low of 31.3 so far. That doesn't make any sense. No, average is 31.2. <sighs> I don't know what I'm doing. Using the latest in pointing your camera at the monitor display capture technology, we can see the Aptio setup from AMI. And here we have just your typical bare bones kind of BIOS setup. What I'm interested in is seeing what we have in the way of options for the fans. Here's the hardware monitor. Oh, there we go. Smart fan function, CPU fan setting. 
Man Manol Fan PWM. It says manually up here, but then it's man Manol. Manual well whatever. I'm not sure what PWM value I want. Let's try fifty. Is that fifty percent? So right now the fan is spinning just under 1700 RPM. CPU temperature is holding it at about 25C. That's what we saw in Windows, somewhere around, I don't know, 25 to 28. AMD CBS, which gives us, among other things, graphics configuration options. You can set the frame buffer size. 16 gigabytes maximum. That might be because we have 32 gigabytes installed. I wonder if that goes up. If you have more, I'll leave everything configured at system defaults before I actually test this, but. So quite a bit of configuration options here, more so than I see from most uh, mini PCs. And we're just going to restore defaults and get out of here or just discard changes and exit actually. Let's get hardware info back open and then run that Final Fantasy 14 benchmark. So in Final Fantasy 14, I will change it to the standard desktop preset, turn off dynamic resolution, and under display settings, change it to full screen. Let's go 1080. Everything else is default. So once the benchmark actually starts, I'll hit start on my stopwatch and I'll be back in about 20 minutes to see what the thermals were like. Still waiting. There we go. So I'll be back in 20 minutes. Okay, we've hit 20 minutes on the looped benchmark run here. And I just want to do a quick noise test because it hasn't really gotten any louder. It's got up to about 33 and a half dBA. It's been just over 20 minutes, so I'm gonna end this. We'll look at thermals. Temperatures hit a maximum of 68.5 C in this 21 C room. And it's already dropping. It's down below 40 already, just a few seconds after stopping the benchmark. So that's good to see. There does seem to be some very good airflow with this cooling solution. And it didn't even get noticeably loud at all. Let's see if we can identify some fan speeds here. CPU fan. Oh, it did get up to almost 2,000 RPM during that test, so nominally it's about 1680, 1660 to 1680. Not bad at all. I'll run some more benchmarks just so you can get an idea of what one of these mobile Ryzen 7 8845HS processors can do, and then we'll wrap this up. Well, it's been a couple of days. Here we are on June 3rd. Late at night, it's about 21 degrees in this room. All right, taking a look at some quick test results here. This is PC Mark 10. In this run, I got 7,489. Digital content creation was excellent here. Comparing that to the Z5 Plus mini PC that I looked at recently, this is much better performance, about 4,000 points higher there. Nearly 4,000 points higher in productivity as well an excellent 10,455 score. Essentials aren't that much higher than the Intel powered system, but still about 800 points higher there. Where this really was impressive was in graphics performance. If I switch over to 3D Mark, just completed this run in Night Raid, 38,000 for the graphics score. Total score 31,443. This is miles ahead of what I got with that Z5 Plus. 
where I had a total score of 12,953 and a graphic score of 16,115. Really, you can run something a lot more advanced than Night Raid and have an acceptable experience because here we're getting a graphics test 1, 150.69 FPS, graphics test 2, over 230 FPS. So we could move up to, I don't know, Fire Strike maybe, something a little bit more advanced than this integrated graphics test, but it is just so much better than the XE graphics in the Intel powered mini PC that it's, it's kind of staggering. And still excellent thermals. I mean, here we're looking at CPU temperature during this test. We maxed out at, it looks like, 65.2 C in this 21 C room. Clock speeds were excellent. You can see, maybe you can see it's a little fuzzy, but 4.8, 4.9 CPU, 2.5 to 2.7 on the GPU. So overall, very impressive performance. Looking over at those PC mark results again, just to give you an idea of what the CPU clocks were like during this test, we did hit the 5.1 gigahertz at times. Looks like our high CPU temps were in about that 65C range. I wonder if that's a throttling point or if it just doesn't get any warmer than that. Oh, we have 66 right here. So overall, very impressive results here much, much faster than that C5 Plus. And the reason I keep bringing that up is not just because it's the most recent Intel mini PC that I looked at, but because the prices are fairly similar. That Leva model retails for $630 and this B-Link SER8 is $649. Obviously I don't have a lot of data points here, but we're looking at a very good value and I find this very easy to recommend. It's time to wrap this review up and honestly this B-Link SER8 mini PC is very impressive especially considering the performance we saw relative to that other mini PC we looked at recently, the Intel powered one. For $649 you're getting something with the Ryzen 7 8845HS, 32 gigabytes of memory, one terabyte of NVMe storage, both of which are crucial brands so it's like retail high quality stuff. And this thing is, is very small, reasonably quiet. I mean, 32 dBA from about 18 inches away is excellent. And the fan never really ramped up. It's, it's just about that loud all the time. And the thing is only about the size of a five and a quarter inch floppy disk and about two inches tall, but still, I mean, this is, this is really compact. Excellent connectivity. I have no complaints about this at all. And I'm sure this sounds like a sponsored review or something. It's not. They offered to send it and I said, sure. And here we are. So good job, B-Link. And this is a very nice little AMD powered minis PC. Now I'm sure there are people out there who would love to see this with maybe additional ethernet ports or in a fanless configuration. There's certainly room for expansion or growth on this concept, but uh, overall, like this is a very well realized mini PC and I can't really fault it for anything. I'd love to see like an SD card slot, make this a little more multimedia friendly, but I mean, you can't have everything. Even the price actually seems really good. I know this is all relative and inflation is very real these days, but 649, doesn't seem like a bad deal when you consider you're getting a complete system with memory and storage. And it even has, you know, Wi-Fi 6, 2.5 gigabit ethernet. So you'll be prepared for the future with this thing. And uh, honestly, I don't know. I really have nothing bad to say about it. I think that'll do it for this uh, quick look at the B-Link SER8. Thank you for watching.